Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today is Monday and I am getting ready to go to the post office and grocery store and run some errands and I thought I would do a quick tutorial a today. Bridget Bardot type smoky eye but not um, not like I, it's not the look that Lisa Eldridge did because it's definitely darker, but it's not just the, you know, black or just rimmed all around. It's just a little bit and just a, a smoky look. And um, I didn't, I didn't do a lot of highlighted cheeks and stuff like that. So just something different. Oh, yeah. So I hope oh, you like that it. That looks so pretty. That looks almost as good as the two clips. Okay. So I've already used, so many people asked me this. I thought I'd show you the Clinique Rollerball and it's all about eyes and it's de-puffing. You can see how much I've used and I love this. It works. I mean, it really de-puffs and I put that on in the morning. Okay, and then as usual, the first thing I'm gonna do is put on my Giorgio Armani Master Corrector right in that darkness. Add it in. You'll have to excuse my, I wanted to paint my nails this morning. Um, I didn't have time to do it last night and sit there like we should. And uh, so I did it this morning, a new color that my friend Nadine sent me, which is the Chanel Pirate, and I love it. But I already had my contacts in, and I could barely see what I was doing. And then they've gotten dented and stuff because I just didn't have enough time to let them dry. But I love that color, isn't it pretty? So it's the pretty next red. thing I'm gonna do is what I do every day is the Rachel K CC Cream in Fair. And uh, Okay, and just make sure you really have that rubbed in. And I make sure I get right there, you know, mainly in the T-zone and all the places that you want it to fill in your pores and keep your makeup from breaking up during the day. And then it also gives, it cancels out some redness and gives some coverage. Okay, where is it? I definitely need to do it. This is one of the main places that if I don't use it, I can see it is my forehead right here. Okay. And then it's real like dry feeling. It's not sticky at all, but it just, it's not sticky, but it does help your Laura Mercier and your mineral powder to stick to it but better than your skin. I don't know. It just creates a real even finish. So today I'm going to be wild and crazy and try something I haven't ever tried, which is the new um, Laura Mercier powder I got, Pure Honey, which is so scary dark looking. You can't even hear. I don't know if you can see how dark that is, um, but it's dark. It looks, it's weird. It looks about the same darkness as Classic Beige, but it does have more yellow in it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the natural beige and um, shake that in there too, just to break it up a little bit. And so that's what we have. You can see two definite different thing, uh, colors here. And so I just pour both of them, it's just like mixing the liquid foundation, pour both of them in the lid and then I mix it up in the lid like that. Tap it off. And I start right here where I don't mind if it's the darkest. And it's morning. It's only about, let's see what time it is, 921. And the sun comes right in my front windows in the morning, even though it's cloudy outside, but just the glare. So that's why I look so ghostly. Goodness. Okay. Okay. And swing it up on my forehead. And because I've used that, the um, fair or classic Rachel K underneath this, I can go a little bit darker because it's, it made my face lighter. So you can see that is pretty, and I'd say I didn't even hardly use too much of it. I'll put it back on the um, non-sifter side and then I'll use that next time that I do my makeup. Okay, so, and I'm not going to put it, sometimes I go across my eyelids, but I have been loving the NARS primer, eye primer, so I'm okay. going to wait and do that. for contour bronzer. I couldn't decide if I wanted to try the Kevin O'Quan uh, medium sculpting powder again today. 
um, I finally got to order the Illamasqua Hollow Cream Pigment that you guys have told me about. It was out of stock forever, but I ordered it last night. Um, but for this look, um, I think I just want to go with what I know I like, which is the bronzer. Okay, and I hate to do this, but I'm going to use today my favorite contour, and it is an old MAC blush. It's not old to me. I got it at the CCO, and that's what I was thinking is maybe some of you can get it at the CCO or All Cosmetics Wholesale or eBay or something like that. It's a blush called Tantone, and it is just the best contour color. It's just a real, it's kind of a dark, flat matte. Get in that bronzy color. Get the tip in there, and then go right in that contour area, and then up, and then down. Like that and now that I have bangs I don't know if this whole forehead area is quite as important but I just still do it just in case and all around my neck to try to clean up okay, that neck so there's the contour and then I'm gonna want to use a nice peachy blush that wasn't too coral just peach and so I grabbed the Chanel in love which is a nice peachy blush and I'm going to use my one of my favorite blush brushes is the Bobbi Brown blush brush <laughs> and I like I like the way it's beveled like that so you can just kind of put it on one side and then put it on the other and then I'm going to pop that right on the top of my cheekbones right here I think with most all the Bridget Bardo tutorials, I see it's a peachy blush. And that's what, I either like the peachy ones or the rosy ones the best. Okay, there we go. And then I am not gonna use any type of illuminators or anything else because I would rather my skin just kind of, you know, but be then I fresh use the Derma Blend Loose Powder um, in my T-Zone. And this is my favorite brush to use. It is the MAC 165. And I just get it right there and go right in here down my nose. And this is the most important part right there. It'll help those lines not show as much. And you can see in my little girl pictures on my Instagram from Throwback Thursdays, I've always had you know these the cheap marks so they're not going anywhere for me so then you get a nice you know glowy but real skin looking makeup it's not you know what it's not that's why i didn't use the laura mercier the new ritual or something like that because that's just so glowy i wanted this just to be kind of a normal skin looking makeup I don't know what I'm trying to say. More natural, you know, even though the eye makeup is going to be heavy. Okay, so like I said, I've been loving this little NARS eye primer. And I can't say what I really like about it that much. It goes on, you know, just like this. Nothing special, but for some reason, my eye makeup just always looks so pretty. And looks so pretty for so long when I use it. It lasts so well. And I noticed that... Lisa Eldridge had used it that day with her baby Bordeaux look, so she must like it too. I got this in that little palette that I just got. It came with the primer and the, oh look, FedEx is here. Yay, I just got my um, Sheila Fajal box. I wasn't really, I don't know if I was expecting but it. But today I'm going to add like these little necklaces. I bought several different little layering necklaces. I love that. And um, this, I love these little bracelets. I think they're called, um, oh God, I can't remember, but this stone is called a chrysophis. I just think it's so pretty. And then I got some other ones, but I won't, this is a tutorial. I won't get into that. Okay. So today I'm going to use something that I don't know if I have ever shown you guys or used in a tutorial. And it is my Trish McAvoy. And it's a little set of eyeshadows that I got when I went to their event that I love. And so I, I wanted to use these just for something different. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, with a when I do a dark look like this, the first thing I like to do is do my crease. 
So I'm going to dip it in this color, which I believe is almond. It's a great crease color, but I mean, it's real similar to Naked. You could probably do this with your Naked Basics palette. This one just has a little bit more pizzazz. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, create my outside and then go in for the crease like that. And just put it, you're going into the crease, but you're also going like all on that brow bone. And I like to come in a little bit because my eyes are shaped that way that, see how they come in? I need to um, get that little bit of skin, as the UK girls would say. So do that right there. And the brush I'm using is a good one. It's the Scott Barnes Crease Brush. I got this a couple years ago, and um, I just love it. It's like the perfect amount of density and fluffiness. Just like that. And put a little bit more. And so basically, you're not, your crease color isn't going to be the star of the look here. It's going to be the you know, dark color and the liner, but you want to create that first because then it's just easier to know where to put your dark color. Then the light color that I got that day is really pretty um, and it is cream. Cold. It's just glaze eyeshadow in cream. I'm going to take that same brush and just put a little bit on it and just go right there under my brow. And you can even kind of blend it with that crease color like that. Okay, so this is something that I like to do and I think it makes it so much easier than, I don't know, than doing the liner last. I like to go ahead and do my winged liner and then do the dark shadow. And that kind of just gives me a place to, like a guide. So let me find my, I've been loving my Louise Young little ultra fine Okay, here it brush. is. Look at how fine that tip is. But it is very strong. It's not real flimsy. It's really easy to use. And you can get Louise Young brushes now at Nordstrom. This is the LY24. So this is my favorite for doing this. I can just have the most consistency with my liner when I use this. And I'm going to get that Lancome liner that she used because it looks so creamy. But I've been using my Clinique. Um, it's the True Black Cream Liner, and it's been working really good. So what I do is get my brush in there real good, and then I, on the top of the jar, which took me a long time to be able to do stuff like this, because I would not want to get this dirty, and I still don't like to get in the back of my hands dirty and stuff like that. I'm not a good swatcher, but it really makes a difference to kind of work it in this brush. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do my magnifying here, and hopefully I can do it. But start off with your brush and get go right in here. And kind of just, what you're doing is you're getting, tilt your head back, and you're kind of getting the liner right into your lashes, almost where your um, eyelid kind of curls down into your lashes. Right there. That's the first thing you want to do. And then right here where your lashes aren't growing, just go ahead and get that good, like that. And then I usually get a little bit more. And now is when I'm going to follow my lower lash line up, like towards my brow. Okay, yeah. Like that. And then meet it back and so you're creating that triangle and it's going to look all crazy and broken because of my eyes being hooded and then just carry it and let's see I like to go a little bit under and then go up and then just start filling that in that triangle like that okay and then it looks all crazy but you need to just now you're start, going to start going over and building up this line to where you want it. Okay, and then with this brush you can kind of bring it out thin. 
like that. Okay, let me try to do the other side here. Maybe you can see this up better. So first go in and get that inside. And see how I'm getting right down at the lashes. With a bigger brush, I just can't seem to get down in there as good. And this um, liner is so creamy. I don't have to keep on, you know, it just goes right on real smooth. And so I want to come right up from that lower lash line to the end of my brow, right about here where that crease color. And I usually go a little bit like that. Okay, looks like I've gone up too high on that side. Let me... I'm trying to just do that more straight out because that's... more the Bardot wing. And just come straight in like that, yeah. Okay, and then start filling in. I think it's worse when I put the magnifying on. Okay, and I usually, I don't put the liner on my brush to go down there. I usually just use what's on, left on it. Oh, shoot. Definitely keep a Q-tip. See, if I was in my bathroom really close to the mirror, I probably wouldn't have as much trouble. Okay, okay, and you could basically stop there if the you fun wanted part. to, but now um, you could take that same Scott Barnes brush, and I'm going to take one that's just a little bit more condensed, and um, let's see, those Sonia Kashuk little white crease brushes. This is a good one for something like this. Okay, the next color I'm going to use is not black, but it's dark. It's called, it's Trish McAvoy, and it's called Blackberry Granite. And it is a beautiful, has a little bit of shimmer. It's unlike any color in MAC that I can think of. It's, um, I don't know, it's darker than it appears. Okay, so now go right where that wing is, where it meets your crease color, and just start in that corner, and then work over on your lid, and then kind of blend up into your crease like that. So from the liner over, kind of like we did with your crease color, you're just not going to go up as far. And you want to keep it dark right around that. I'm going to put a little bit more and make sure I have it dark right on that liner. Like that. And see how easy that was? You, it didn't, you didn't have to really guess like where to put it or where to stop out here because your liner was a, you know, a guide. Okay, okay, so right, go right to the corner, not past the wing, and then over onto the lid and up into the crease like that. And then just keep, I'm kind of keeping working out um, and blending, okay. Okay, and I like to go almost touch the, but it's, it depends on the shape of your brows. Because mine go in, I like to kind of almost meet up with them right here and um, create that line. And then my, just my brow bone is the only one that's not dark. And then go like that. Okay, looks like I need some more blending right here. Can see it better on the computer than I can. I'm gonna wipe off my brush and then blend that out some. And I'm sure I would bet $100 that's a telemarketer. I was wrong. <laughs> that was the guy that um, is gonna do our flower beds. I love getting fresh mulch and all that stuff. Okay, I love that. Don't you just love that shadow? Isn't it gorgeous? I think it's just like the perfect kind of older Bardo look. 
Okay, and um, so now I'm not going to do any more liner, but what I am going to do is the uh, light liner on the inner rim, and I need to go get that. It's the Merrill Norman. Okay, here it is, um, and this just happens to be my favorite one, but I know Rimmel and some other brands have it, but this one just is not so stark, and it's not shimmery or anything else. It's just a flesh tone that goes on your inner rim, and it's was made for that so see it's not too bright but it just leaves it real clean looking because I did notice that you know most of the time Bridget Bardot does use the dark liner but a lot of times um, I noticed that she didn't and um, like when they do Claudia Schiffer and a lot of people do that same look a lot of times they'll use the lighter liner and I think it looks probably looks better on me and it definitely I think sometimes looks better on older well I hate to say older but you know what I mean <laughs> 40 girls okay so I guess the next thing I'm going to do would probably be brows and my brows I don't know I've kind of let them grow out I, I did love it when they threaded them but they really kind of took a big chunk out right there and they gave me that real archy kind of look you know and it was a lot to keep up with to keep the shape and I think I'm kind of just enjoying them being a little bit more natural let me know what you think if you like them if you liked them before when they had a more of an arch or if you like them now and I'm going to use just my fling I go back and forth between fling and lingering <laughs> this one is lighter of course but um it just depends on today I just don't want a real dominant brow and I think Hey, the truth I think since I've had bangs or fringe you know your brows just aren't as much of a focal point so I'm basically just filling in this front part and I'm gonna since this one is right much lower than that one a lot of times I'll just go along the top and just give it a little extra kind of like putting high heels on this one I'll just give it a little lift a little extra a wedge and um, like that and then I'm going to just brush it out because oh, if I'm ever in a hurry and I don't, then later on I see lines right here. Okay. Like that. Okay, and I'm just going to take my blonde brow gel and go over that real quick. Just to keep them in place. And I like the color of this brow gel. It's just adds a little bit of golden to my brows softens them some okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm through with my shadows I didn't use the black you could go over with more black in the crease or something but I just think that's dark enough for me and um, I'm gonna put my lashes on and then mascara so I'm using my same lashes that I always do the 120 s Ardell's and I have used these several times but these will be so easy to put on because of that. And I use my duo dark I put blue, blue on and um, bend it a little like that. And I'm gonna take it. And I don't put mascara on because if I do, my lashes will curl up just enough to keep these from going on correctly. So I'm gonna take it and drop it right there. And set it right down. You can, I can feel that it's right where it should be. I can feel it all along my lash line. So you can see how easy that was. Much, much easier than the individual lashes or about any other lash. Let's see. And so I bit this and I'm going to take it right and pop it right there and just make sure it's touching and I feel it I feel the you know the glue hit it it's already grabbing I hate it when they grab one of these lower lashes okay so I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes before I start in with mascara because I do need to put mascara on because my lashes underneath are not into those lashes and they're not darker dark enough. not decide 
what color lip I wanted to do, but I wanted to do a more practical lip than I did the other day. Um, so what I usually do if I want that light peachy color is I'll take MAC Myth and put it on. like that. I recommend everybody having myth because even if you don't use it as the color that it is, it's a good tool to have to make other lipsticks so just lighter. Just make sure you've got it worked all in your lips and you can see that that's pretty ridiculous looking. It's um, the only thing good about myth is I do like the way it does the edges of your lips. Okay, then take a, once you've got it worked all in the lines and everything, take a paper towel and blot it. Now, a lot of times I really, what I should have done is I should have done this before I even started my eyes and that way it has time to kind of stain your lips but see how it takes all the pigment out of your lips but it leaves them if you just put foundation or concealer on your lips I don't know I think it leaves it slicky where other things don't stick to it as well okay I'm going to use that same liner as the other day because I think it's such a great color it's the Rimmel tiramisu and line my lips and Bridget Bardot overlined her lips, so go for it if you want to. I'm going to go right on the edge of mine. See how the pencil is still going on the lips, whereas if you had foundation or even um, chapstick or something like that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't draw right on it. I don't have a real definite Cupid's bow. Mine's kind of um, just dense in. And then when I do my lips together, it seems like my bottom lip almost covers it up. But and then here is that, what I was talking about. See how my actual lip comes to here, but the pigment is only to here. So I never knew what to do, but uh, I've been doing like she did and just going ahead and lining it. I had somebody tell me I shouldn't waste that real estate. <laughs> okay, so now you've got your lips lined and it looks like I need to. That myth will kind of show where you need to put your liner. It'll kind of, um, on mine it does, it shows you the rim of your lips. Okay, now I'm going to use that Bobbi Brown matte lipstick that I told you about the other day that I just got. It's called true or pale peach yeah pale peach and on its own it's not really that pale it's got a lot of color to it but over this myth it'll be lighter okay you can see you can still see i don't know if i have my lip brush i do this is a bobby brown concealer brush it's my favorite lip brush so you can kind of blend it up onto that liner like that. And down. Like that. That's still too bright for me. Still too dark. So I'm I blot it that. down like that. And now I'm going to take a little bit more of that myth and go over just the center. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it perfect. Okay, perfect color. Because you want it to be matte. And make sure you work it in. I'm gonna take my lip brush again. I have to make sure I work it in all those little, see how those creases right there? And then if you want to, you can even go back over with your lip liner. Just to define the edges. So now we're almost okay. finished. I'm going to do the mascara, and I'm using the Urban Decay Super Curl 
I like this. I like the shape of the brush. It doesn't transfer or flake. Make sure you and it's go easy underneath to wash off. those lashes and get yours. It's easier for me to do this in the bathroom because I really tilt my head back. I'm really not trying to get my false lashes. I'm just getting my lashes underneath. And then I get the edge and make sure I pull those out to the side. Underneath there, like that. And then pull these out. And I kind of just connect them up with those. Like that. So you have that dark base and because you took that cream liner and got so far down into the lashes that really helps and I don't do the upper waterline but you can if you want to and then I'm going to do a little bit on the bottom especially because of the way I take the liner at the bottom you don't have to do that that's you don't have to do anything but that's that I do that because I think it helps lift my eyes and then I'm going to do just a little bit of mascara on the bottom you could even do a little bit of that first crease color, that um, toasted color, but I'm gonna try to keep it real simple. Um, I've been, when days that I really don't want it real bright up underneath my eyes, I've been using this um, Hourglass Sand because it's a little bit darker and it's real creamy. I wanna try that new Benefit one too and see how I like it, but put it on my finger and just run it right where that darkness is. I don't go up on, you know, up under the eye or anything and I don't do a triangle, I just literally stay right in that darkness like that and just pat it in and I do carry it out like this sometimes just right up under there because I've got some veins and go under that wing but see how that wing, at first it looked so severe, and I know you thought it was too far out. And But see how it looks like so when it lashes, it. kind of? I'm going to take this and watch these bangs. See, just that little bit of time, that side's not going to want to go where it should now. But I'm going to go fix my hair, so and I'll be right I just back. Have on, this top I have on is a Alec T by Alexander Wang. It's a tank I got last year, and I never wore it. I just took the tags off of it today. And then this is the um, Victoria's Secret... Um, moto jacket that I just showed you on Friday and the tank comes down um, kind of probably covers most of my butt <laughs> and then I just have on leggings because I'm because I wanted to put on something comfy I just threw on my um, fry boots because it's raining and um, I just thought they would be the easiest so just a for accessories I just threw on some um, CZs I don't I put them on earlier this morning I just didn't even change them and then this is the little necklace that I should have. I have it in rose gold, gold and silver. Um, just like a little fun little layer and piece. And I like that it goes right in that section of your neck sometimes that you don't, I don't know, you don't, you need a little short necklace, a little thin one. It's good for layering. And then I showed you the um, bracelet. It's called the Chrysophis. And um, I love it. And I bought a few of these. And then I bought a few of the lapis with gold. And it's beautiful. Look how pretty. And so you can, you know, it can't turn on the wrong side. I hope you have a good day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.